just how well have tools built here in free agent acquisitions been playing so far this year? And are the Jack Michael trade talks starting to heat up once again? We find out that and more today on Locked on Wild. You're Locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's up? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Wild your first listen every day. And just as a reminder, we are free and available wherever you listen to podcasts. All you have to do is just search for Locked On Wild and follow us everywhere to stay up to date on all of the latest Minnesota Wild content. On today's episode of Locked On Wild, we dive in to look at how a couple of Bill Guerin's big free agent acquisitions have been doing so far this year. And turns out they have been doing very, very well as we talk about Freddie Goudreau and Dmitry Kulikov. And we also look at where things are at with the Jack Eichel trade talks as things are starting to heat up again. The Wild not necessarily as involved this time around, but could Eichel go to a team that the Wild will play later this season? We will find out. My name is Seth Topol, host of Lockdown Wild, veteran Minnesota sports content producer with over a decade's worth of experience covering Minnesota sports teams and happy to have you along for a Thursday edition of Locked on Wild. And coming off of the win against the Ottawa Senators, a lot uh, a lot of good to take from the game, but uh, still, as we've talked about all season, still some room for improvement. And there's been a lot of uh, stats thrown out um, during the year and uh, in particular after the win. Uh, against the Ottawa Senators. And uh, it, it led to looking at a couple of guys who have flown under the radar um, in their performance so far this year. And uh, got to give credit to uh, Brett Marshall of the Sound the Foghorn podcast uh, for putting all of this together. Um, one of the really unsung heroes of this Minnesota Wild team has been uh, Dmitry Kulikov so far this season. And uh, as Brett notes in this Twitter thread. Uh, I've been incredibly impressed with the play of Dmitry Kulikov so far this season. In eight games and a total of 112 minutes and 16 seconds in even strength ice time, Kulikov has the following stats. Expected goals, uh, Kulikov is at 69.31%. Uh, Corsi 4 percentage is at 57.28%. Uh, Corsi four plays are 118 to 88 in Kulikov's favor when it's him on the ice. Shot differential of plus 19, goal differential of plus four, high danger shot differential of plus 18. His 69.31% expected goals four percentage is an NHL best among at all players with at least 100 minutes of even strength ice time. You can also add to this three assists, 16 shot attempts, seven hits, and 14 blocks. Um, and all of that leads to what has been a really, really good signing uh, by Bill Guerin to, uh, to help out this team. Obviously, in the offseason, had to fill the void left by Ian Cole departing and uh, also had to fill the void later of Carson Soucy. Um, that was uh, was sent to the Seattle Kraken in the expansion draft. So obviously we had uh, a lot of minutes uh, on defense that needed to be replaced. Add in the fact that Ryan Suter was bought out and went to the Dallas Stars. So that is a lot of minutes on defense that had to be replaced for this Minnesota Wild team. And so they go to Kulikov, who is uh, a veteran uh, defenseman. He has been uh, around a couple of different spots, Florida, Buffalo, Winnipeg. Uh, New Jersey and Edmonton throughout uh, his seven years in the league, uh, 10 years in the league, I beg your pardon. And so they uh, they get a veteran guy that, uh, that knows what he needs to do. And as we saw in the stats, 
Uh, he has been very, very good so far this year. And I think one of the things for me that has stood out the most uh, is that he is uh, is very active um, on offense with the team. He's not just, you know, playing the back end and kind of staying home to uh, to defend in front of Cam Talbot. He's helping push the puck up uh, up the ice and is being an active participant when the Wild have the puck in the uh, the opponent's zone and he's he's done a great job of um of of helping with opportunities towards the net he's not afraid to shoot from the top of the zone uh which is something that you know can can certainly help get the action going uh for uh, for his teammates and so you look at those numbers and as we'll talk about with the other free agent signing uh here in a little bit in Freddie Goudreau um guys that have stepped into a role and have really embraced it. And with Goligoski out, Kulikov playing on that top line with uh, with Jared Spurgeon, and his play has arguably gotten better since he uh, stepped into that spot um, opposite of Spurgeon. And he's, he's active and involved on the offensive side. And just one of the objectives heading into the season for this wild team was that if – we could go good stretches of the season without um, having to say, boy, we really miss Carson Soucy or we really miss Ian Cole. Um, then uh, then those would be considered good replacements for those guys. And I, we, we really haven't done that with the exception of maybe one or two games in just kind of pointing it out Um I think the Seattle game was one, and uh, the Winnipeg game was uh, was another one. But by and large, Kulikov has stepped in, and he's really helped solidify that uh, that wild decor. So th- that was a great signing for uh, for Bill Guerin, and Kulikov signed for next year as well. And so hopefully he can uh, can build off of this strong start that he has uh, put together for the Wild and uh, can really help uh, take a little pressure off of some of those top guys. Obviously, when Alex Goligoski comes back, Kulikov will probably slide back down to the third D pairing. It'll be interesting to see then what happens to Kalen Addison or John Merrill, who, which one ends up being the kind of the odd man out. Uh, but, um, you know, again, as, uh, as Brett said in those tweets, just absolutely dominating. Uh, in a lot of the key stat areas so far this season. And anytime you're leading the NHL in any category, that is uh, that is a great thing to see. And so uh, keep, uh, tip of the cap to Kulikov for uh, for his play so far this year. And, you know, the eye test, he's, he's passing the eye test as well. He's being aggressive with the puck um, when the Wild have it. And... Um, as we'll talk about with Freddie Goudreau next, the uh, the Wild have had the puck quite a bit as a team so far this year. So uh, they've been helping out with the uh, the chances. And coming into the season, we weren't sure what to really expect uh, from a couple of these guys. And they have uh, definitely impressed and have turned heads. And uh, that's just great to see uh, for this Wild team. Six and three right now and uh, largely in part to uh, some of these huge free agent contributions uh, throughout the lineup. So good work by Dmitry Kulikov. Hopefully he can keep it going here throughout the rest of the season. We will next up look at Freddie Goudreau, who's putting up similar numbers and uh, is really helping solidify uh, now that he has found um, a line mate who seems to enjoy him as a center in Kirill Kaprizov. We'll talk about that coming up next here on Locked on Wild. BetOnline.ag is back, and they are better than ever. They've got a new web interface for the start of the basketball season, and they offer more props, odds, and lines than ever before. BetOnline.ag remains your number one spot for all the basketball and football action this season. So head over to their new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code Locked On to receive that welcome bonus. From basketball, football, NHL, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. 
BetOnline.ag is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. BetOnline.ag, where the game starts. Continuing today's episode of Lockdown Wild, and again, thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you listen to podcasts. So we talked about Freddie, uh, we talked about Dmitry Kulikov, spoiler alert, uh, in the first segment here today and what he has brought to this wild lineup. And now we'll talk about the other major free agent acquisition for this wild team that has really flown under the radar, that being Freddie Goudreau. We didn't really know what to expect from Goudreau coming into the season because he wasn't a player that really had a whole lot of experience uh, before he uh, came into this season. He had played in parts of three seasons with the Nashville Predators uh, from 2016 to 2019, and he played in uh, 19 games last year with the Pittsburgh Penguins, tallied 10 points. Now he threw nine games with the Wild, has two points so far, goal and an assist, but a lot of those other metrics are very, very good for uh, Freddie Goudreau. So let's take you through them uh, here um, as we look at just what he's done so far. So Goudreau, let's look at the Corsi 4 percentage in uh, five on five on ice time. And uh, we're setting a filter just like Brett did of 100 minutes on the ice. So looking at that, the Corsi 4 percentage for Freddie Goudreau currently sits at 61.98. And again, Corsi 4 percentage is the percentage of time that your team possesses the puck compared to the opponent. This takes into account shots on goal, missed shots on goal, uh, a couple of other factors as well. So 50%, you and your opponent are possessing the puck evenly. Goudreau, in even strength situations this year, is at 61.98%, which is good for fourth in the NHL. Uh, in that metric, Dmitry Kulikov is 15th in the entire NHL as a defenseman at 58.42. By comparison, Kevin Fiala is at 59.13% uh, and is 12th in the entirety of the NHL amongst players that qualify. So with Goudreau on the ice, the Wild are possessing the puck 62% of the time compared to their opponents possessing the puck 38% of the time. This was a big factor in the win against the Ottawa Senators is the Wild just dominated um, down the stretch. And um, Goudreau's Corsi 4 percentage in the game was 72 so the Wild, with him on the ice in five-on-five -five situations, possessed the puck 72% of the time compared to the Senators. And the better part of that is that he's doing this as a center. So he is directly able to impact that number by, uh, by winning faceoffs. And Goudreau, so far this year, is winning faceoffs at a 51% clip in five-on-five -five situations, however, um, a little bit under 50%, but at even strength, he's right at 50%. So he's winning face-offs basically half the time, which is helping to extend presence in the opponent's zone and uh, is helping the Wild continue to hold the puck and generate scoring chances. That's That's really what it comes down to is you hold the puck in the opponent's zone for longer. That generates more shot attempts. More shot attempts leads to more goals. And so having a guy like Freddie Goudreau who can directly impact that is, uh, is extremely helpful, and it's paying off in a big way for this wild team. Some other players on this wild team, their Corsi 4 percentage, uh, Ryan Hartman is at 57.69% in 5-on-5 uh, five five situations this year. That's good for eight, uh, 19th in the league. 
Um, John Merrill is at 57.14%. That's 29th. Uh, Jared Spurgeon at 56.28. Kirill Kaprizov's at 56.09. And um, I think just because of how much players have been moving around, I'm trying to find Jewel Erickson Eck. He is at 53.52%. Corsi four percentage, which is good for 110th in the league. And so obviously with the lines being juggled as much as they have been so far this year, um, leading to different line mates for Erickson Eck. But I think we really found something uh, in the game against Ottawa that could work going forward as line combinations. And I mean, with Felino, Erickson Eck, and Fiala, Kaprizov, Goudreau, and Hartman was very good throughout uh, pretty much the entirety of the game. And that's just because of what we talked about. Goudreau able to win faceoffs, and he just is a really good fit for uh, helping possess the puck and generate more chances uh, for this team. Uh, now, some of the other metrics that, uh, that we have seen used as well. Um, the expected goals for percentage, uh, the percentage of expected goals that your team is able to um, put on the ice. Goudreau is number one with uh, a minimum of 100 minutes on the ice in five-on-five -five situations. The, his expected goals for percentage on the ice is at 70.9%. Uh, Dmitry Kulikov second at 69.67. So. Obviously, these guys are having uh, big impacts on the uh, the outcome of the games. And, you know, we we looked at all of these spots that the Wild had to try to fill. And Bill Guerin had, did some great work bringing uh, those guys in. Because some of the alternatives, let's look at uh, Christian Dvorak, for instance, who could have been acquired. But it would have taken um, it would have taken some assets to be able to get him um, from Arizona, and he ended up going to the Montreal Canadiens. But some of his numbers on the season: uh, Dvorak's Corsi four percentage in five on five situations is at forty six point nine percent. So possessing the puck less than fifty percent um, compared to their opponents. In even strength situations, he's at 46.5%. And yes, he does have more points. He's got four points compared to Goudreau's two. But at the same time, you know, as I alluded to, Goudreau is having a huge impact on those time of possession battles by being able to win faceoffs himself and uh, sustain plays for this uh, this wild team. So. Would I would I rather have Dvorak than uh, than Goudreau? I mean, yeah, obviously, Dvorak is uh, is I think the better player between the two. But in terms of excelling at a role, Goudreau has done great at that so far this season. Uh, the other one that I wanted to look at was Nick Benino, who went to the San Jose Sharks, and um, some of his numbers, his Corsi four percentage. In even strength is at 43.6. Uh, in five-on-five -on -five situations, it's at 44. So those guys, you know, not having as good of an impact on the uh, puck possession as uh, as Goudreau is. Now in the face-off circle, Benino winning face-offs at 55% in even strength, 52% in five on five. So he's pretty much right with Goudreau um, in that number as well. And uh, looking at Christian Dvorak's numbers in the, uh, the face-off circle, he is, as of now, at even strength. He is at 52.9%. Um, and in five on five, he's at 53 and a half. So again, comparable with Freddie Goudreau, and what he's been able to do so far this season. So Goudreau, I think, has has fit in and has looked good 
he's he's extremely active defensively too, which is great. Um, but he has looked good, and so has Kulikov. And the other thing to consider as well is that if not for Nick Foligno waiting as long as he did to eventually sign with Boston, that ended up impacting us, uh, the Wild, being able to sign both of those guys and not be able to sign Ian Cole. Because if Foligno makes his decision earlier, it's very likely that we sign Ian Cole almost immediately. And maybe then in that case, we end up with Goudreau, maybe not. But uh, we probably don't end up with Kulikov then in that situation. So sometimes that's just how things play out. And you just have to, uh, you just have to go with the way it works. So obviously those two guys have been very good so far this year. And hopefully that continues um, as the rest of the season goes. But again, shout out to Brett Marshall of the Sound the Foghorn podcast for putting those numbers together for Kulikov. Um, obviously, that is is where a lot of that came for uh, Freddie Goudreau as well. So great to see that those guys are are playing as well as as they have looked. That uh, that they've got the numbers to back it up as well. We will finish today's episode of Locked On Wild with a little bit of an update on the Jack Eichel trade sweepstakes. It sounds like talks are picking up. Are the Minnesota Wilds still involved? We find out next here on Locked on Wild. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild. And again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen every day. Just a reminder, we are free and available wherever you listen to podcasts. The Jack Eichel situation has resurfaced. And the Minnesota Wilds, are not involved anymore, but that's none of my business. Uh, it seems as though it is down to the Calgary Flames, the Vegas Golden Knights, and maybe the St. Louis Blues as well, coming out of nowhere to, uh, to try to help facilitate this thing. It was reported almost four hours ago uh, at least when I'm recording this podcast, which is at one in the morning, um, it was reported that uh, Sean Monahan, as well as um, Matthew Tuchuk, on the table for the Calgary Flames to try to acquire Jack Eichel. Um, not both, but one or the other uh, certainly seems to be the way that. Um, that that would uh, would go, and obviously that is a sizable package um, that the Sabers would be getting back in return, which would include prospects and players as well, uh, in addition to to Chuck. Um, the Vegas Golden Knights apparently are involved as well, but uh, I think as we've seen with the Vegas Golden Knights. They're just running out of healthy players to be able to um, make this thing happen. And I think one of the biggest pieces that would be needed to make um, this trade happen would, of course, be Shea Theodore. Did see on NHL Network that um, a potential trade package was looking like Shea Theodore, Peyton Krebs, Danil Chaika, a 2022 first and a 2023 second for Jack Eichel for the Vegas Golden Knights. And obviously the package with Tuchuk would, um, would probably beat that. And uh, it looks from Kevin Weeks as though the package would include Tuchuk an upcoming first-round pick, a former first-round pick, and two prospects uh, coming from the Calgary Flames to uh, to make that trade happen. Now, then St. Louis gets involved. They could theoretically offer Vladimir Tarasenko to try to help uh, facilitate things between the three of them. And then St. Louis gets a little better 
than they already are by maybe picking up to Chuck or Monahan. Needless to say, this is a mess. And we have seen some flashes of, uh, of what is at stake for the Wild in this trade. Obviously, as we've said all along, Jack Eichel's talent is not in question. He is a top 10 player in this league when healthy. He also is not healthy right now. And so you are running a big risk in going for Eichel that it's going to take him some time to be ready to go. And with the fact that it's going to cost you Fiala and probably two of Boldy Rossi Beckman, as well as other draft picks, it's a rich asking price. And I know it's early, but Adam Beckman's shown some really good things so far with the Wild um, in his, uh, his couple of games that he's played. Uh, obviously, Marco Rossi is, is playing well in Iowa as well, and Matt Boldy hopefully will be back before too long from his injury. So we are seeing those guys get very close to making impacts at the NHL level to the point where they may make impacts earlier than Eichel is ready to return. It all depends on what the timetable is for that uh, procedure that he's trying to have done that the Sabres are hesitant to have him do. I just, I continue to be hesitant to make that trade. And so I guess best case scenario for me is that, uh, that Eichel goes to Calgary so that we don't have to see him until the Stanley Cup final um, uh, with the ex occasional regular season game sprinkled in as well. But at this point, it just, just get the trade done so that Eichel can get a fresh start and that we can stop talking about it. I was hesitant to even bring it up today, but um, I just I wanted to give an update on the package that it's going to take to get Eichel so that we could see what would be comparable to uh, what the Wild would have to give up to make it happen. And I just, I'm not comfortable with parting with that at this point because those guys are either here or are going to be here before we know it and will make an impact on this team. So that's, uh, that's it on Eichel. I'm out on Eichel. We've been out on Eichel. Hopefully it'll happen so that we don't have to talk about it again, but just, just an update for today to finish off the, uh, the show. Coming up the rest of the week, we will take a look at the Pittsburgh Penguins coming up on Saturday. We've got a crossover episode with Hunter from Locked on Penguins that will be in the works probably for Friday. We also will bring back the return of What's on Tap with Spoke Z for the weekend. And uh, we are working on some prospects to, uh, to add into the mix as well for uh, some segments. Trying to get those times ironed out, but we'll make sure to keep you up to date here on Locked on Wild. And we want to throw in a mailbag coming up as well uh, to get questions from you that we can have answered here on the show. So busy uh, next couple of weeks for Locked on Wild. We'll keep you up to date with everything going on with the Minnesota Wild as we go. Now that your first listen is done for the day, want to make sure to direct you to Locked on NHL to keep up to date with everything going on throughout the league, including the Chicago Blackhawks situation, as well as uh, scores from games that happen every single day throughout the NHL. So make sure to check out Locked on NHL wherever you listen to podcasts. Make sure also to follow Locked on Wild wherever you listen to podcasts and on our social media platforms, which include Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube as well. We've got videos coming out all throughout the week, so make sure you don't miss any of that. Search Lockdown Wild and follow us everywhere that pops up. You can also find new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.